here it is my ET experience um, I was a little bit reluctant to share this I also think that this is just more beneficial than than anything I've ever seen so it just kind of seems like to me that the the impact that this has on me um, should be shared because it's it's so outlandish and profound um, it sounds I guess that sounds kind of like I'm stroking my own ego there but it's um just me it doesn't feel like it it definitely just feels so weird uh, and I, don't, I don't like that use that word it's, it's like negative connotation involved in it but for most of the time but um it's just a very yeah it's just very uh outlandishly amazing and um i'll hop right into it then so basically what had happened was i was uh behind uh it was a friend's place and for some reason i just had this this urgency to go outside and look down the valley because I live in the desert this is in Rosamond at the time and I could see this this uh, there's a light traveling at first there was just one there was two eventually but there was traveling and it was, it was like swishing back and forth um, towards LA like kind of like it looked like it was above the mountains but it's there's such a far distance it's kind of hard to tell and I watched it for about uh, I don't know I was probably out there for like an hour and a half or two hours just like going back and watching this thing and I even invited my um, my neighbor to come check it out I had it well I had to wake him up but <laughs> uh, and he saw it too, and I was like, then this thing, you know, it can't be a drone, it's flying so far. And it's it's uh it's transversing like thirty miles in like a second <laughs> and a half, maybe. It's like and and it's also it's been up in the air for much longer than I think the drones at the time. This is twenty nineteen. I think most of them can only fly for like a max uh, 40 minutes. I think we looked that up. And that's like insane, like, you know, military type technology. I mean, I'm sure they have more shit than we know now. But um, for as far as it just being a regular drone, it was not. And, um, and then I had this feeling... Because this is the first time this happened, I had this feeling to then uh, turn on the radio. I was thinking, well, if they're if they're attracting so much attention, then they must um, maybe they're trying to communicate as well. Because it's like you know, it's like a big shining light in the sky. It's, you know, it's a huge draw. And I was like, how do they communicate if it's not if it's not that direct? And it was like maybe just the radio waves. Everyone has a radio, or most people do. And um, I went to like AM station, and you'll see this in the video. There's a, like a bunch of evidence. Toledo. It's moving even more in this camera. You can like see its streaks. So that's a cross section. That's a down section. This is a UFO. That's wild. Cross down T over over around So it was like a T and then left up over up so the you come on out you bastards Papa's waiting Spelled out 
uh, OPR. I don't know what that means. It could mean a branch of the military research is nuclear testing to see what would really happen to cities. And they just had Bakersfield and the Bay Area power out. San Bernardino. It happened. Uh, there had just been like a bunch of uh, blackouts uh, of electricity, like on purpose. Um, I guess it had been mandated by, I think it was, it was the government or a, I guess it says P&G on here. And in the sky, it had like, it had written the abbreviation um, for this, these uh, government test um, program, which tests like the effects of like a nuclear war or like basically like EMP um, on large scale towns. And it was weird because they were shutting it down. They said there was going to be like fires, but uh, in the desert, there's just, it, I mean, there is dry shit, but there's just a lot of dirt. There's a, a lady friend that's next time. I'm not going to put her name in here. I don't know if she's talked about this. So, but you just see her, you can't see her face in, in the video just because she was there the whole time. Um, so she, she could, you know, say she could clarify and, and confirm that all this all this happened um the parts after this and then it spelled out it could be transmission unit and then it spelled out 898 but that's the one with the morse code is am oh no 897 899 when you go here you hear it it's an alien attacking ah. so that's the morse Translator. But that's not what we're moving. Huh. So, I'm sorry. I got the mic, Tron mic, up to the receiver, and it's given a different. This is me. Phoned home, said, Yo, ET meet. Way too many E's and way too many T's. Wow, that's that's fucking odd. Like, what is the odds that I would pick up on thinking of that? Oh, like, record the fucking random radio and then be like, Oh, that sounds like Morse code. There's that's how they can communicate through Morse code, like the military does. Or has for like many wars at this point. Light was spelling out these abbreviations in the sky. Like I could see it move and I could like kind of like see it doing like the outline of letters. And you'll see that's in the video. Um, so then we decided uh, that night we drove out and well, it was my car was a Saturn at the time. <laughs> it's a planetary thing. Little joke there. Nee, 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 mop, nop, nop. Um, and we just saw more flying lights that night. We were watching them on the video. And we went out and... Um, yeah, my name is Brendan, by the way. If this is just a random person watching. Brendan Ramon. Uh, we were sitting in the car and we heard this like... This weird... It's like a robot slash alien voice. It was like... Like... Which was a little weird. Uh, I don't. That is the one thing I didn't get. 
I don't think I had a recording that unless it's somewhere else. I have to maybe look around more. But oh, so we went out at eleven twenty, and it only seemed like an hour and a half, but apparently we're out there for two hours and forty minutes because we returned at two to two twenty. Um, so I don't know if we just maybe we just camped out there longer than we had thought, but it did kind of feel like when I was sitting in the car um, that it started to move like forward and backward, and then like very slightly and then like vibrate and then go up like me personally not not as much the car like or maybe like the surrounding so you say maybe that was like an earthquake but but wait there's more uh there is one of those that's coming up that is like way more uh defined let's just say let's see 10 11 so that was october 11 we're at a uh, church festival next door, and I kept seeing these. I was just noticing that the, the lights were moving, the white ones, but I was also noticing that there is these multicolored lights appearing, uh, and they were like glowing red, green, blue. I don't know. They just I've never I hadn't seen that many in the sky before. I've only seen like one that was like that brightly colored. And I'd even check like my star map to look for like the um, binary and like the triple star systems. And they didn't like the ones that I was looking at the lights because you know if there's three stars they can be different colors. Um, and you might maybe just get different flashes through the waves. Um, and they didn't match up. And it, I don't think it was a galaxy there, but uh, well it wasn't apparently. And I just remember I remember looking up at it and I could just I could just like feel that that it wasn't that it wasn't what it was i could just like feel like in you kind of feel like in like your core like in your center like kind of like in your heart but like a little lower and you can also feel like if you ever felt someone watching you like you just know like what if you've ever looked in like this big ass stadium and you ever like just looked around and you're like i just feel someone like there's this draw like this connection um Oh, and like someone staring at you. A lot of people, or some people, have that sense. And I just feel so strongly. We we're at this, like it was like a um, this festival right next door. And I could, we we're, we we're gonna go to uh, another one after she wanted to go to the one. It was called um, Moon Tribe. And I was like, oh, Moon Tribe. That's that's kind of a different, you know, like spiritual, you know, kind of like the woo woo. If you wanna like get into the whole like being um i guess de degrading and kind of in disbelief of uh some of these aspects already like right off the bat but um it, we we're gonna go to this this people like they kind of like go out for the full moon and they have like a party and you know sometimes they some people say like it's just kind of like a praise to the moon because it's giving it's got it's full it's full lit bruh and uh so we went to we started to travel there i got the um i got my trailer and my utv to the back of my rv and i had this is like a um older class c rv which basically means it's like a it's like a dually it's dual rear wheel um rv picture but it has this um this plate of metal over the um, like where the mud flap would be behind the tire and um, I had I just had this feeling like right before uh, I left that I should I don't usually do this but I was like I should bring the whole jack so I had a bottle jack in there but I was like oh, I'll bring the whole jack like it's a big pump one, big metal one, you know, and and then um, also this the spare I think was just sitting out because I had taken it off. I put that inside my RV, which is also pretty unusual because it takes a lot of room. And then um, the the bar, the T bar, to like take the thing off, and I was like, oh, I just have this feeling that I'm gonna need it, which I ended up needing it, but um. And then we started to to travel 
to the um, the event, which is like I think it was like an hour and ten minutes from where we were, only, and when we pulled over, and I just I don't know, I just it just felt weird. It felt like we were like, you know, how you're like like awake in a dream. It started to feel like that. I mean, obviously we didn't fall asleep or anything, but um, yeah, and then. Um, the, the vehicle was doing fine. Like I just pulled over just to like take a leak and check everything. And, um, I, we started driving and then we get like, like around halfway there, maybe a little less. Um, and the, the rear wheel, I, or I could hear something. I didn't. I wasn't sure exactly what it was. I thought it might have been like the highway because we had changed to like a different type of pavement that was like, you know, sometimes you can hear like the concrete whirl, the tire on the tire more, but it hadn't been making the noise before. So this is weird. And then I just hear like this whirl, whirl, whirl. and, um, and then just listening to it. And then I'm like, that's, I don't know what the hell that is. But it wasn't like too loud where it was like, oh shit, this is like gonna be bad. And then the um, the tire like exploded. So and then and then um, I just I just had this thought in my head. I was like, oh shit, that's like that's them, the the people, the star or quote unquote. Starship, I guess it'd be more accurate. Uh, wanting, wanting us to stop and pull over here. So I was like, oh well, I don't know. You know, I started to have like these doubts. I'm like, shit, is that really? And um, I remember later I was thinking like, cause I had, I had remembered, like I don't know. I think it was that night or the night before. I had, I thought I had this thought that like maybe these things that we were seeing and like and like having some type of you know um decoded uh kind of like gaining their communication like getting some of it and i thought i had thought i had like f this feeling that something was tampering like underneath the rv but even i even went back later and checked um so we are going to get gas, I was like, oh, maybe like pulling out of the the curb, push that metal piece up under the tire. But it was only on the one left tire. But I drove I drove the RV back to where I came out of, which was like a steeper curve, and the gas station that we went out of. And it wasn't even really like that close. Like it was like still uh, like two feet away. Like, cause it, or maybe like a foot and a half. Cause it's pretty high in the back, um, so I didn't push it there, and it, we would have had to have like that was the only place we were, like could have that could have happened. But anyway, that doesn't really like obviously that's just me trying to like make a logical answer to like how the fuck that would happen. And it, obviously from the next part that happens, it's that's just me like you know just being like I need I need a better answer. <laughs> Because I decided, like, well, I'm going to pull off, but I'm not, because we have a flat tire now, but it's not, it's not the outside tire, it's the inside tire, just the inside on the dually. So there's two tires in this one and the inside one out. Now I'm flicking you off. Didn't mean to. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we pull off the highway, and I was like, I don't want to just pull off, like, it was kind of darker. I was like in the dark, just like by ourselves. Like, I don't really know what's going to happen here. So I pull on the other side of the highway going like the opposite way, but I kind of like, we went over a bridge and then I parked there was luckily there was another RV, like resting there. They were towing theirs and it was like, a. it was like this one it was like a tow behind, like, a tan one but um I mean this I mean kind of like the one I'm in now but this is a different RV and then <clears throat> so I was like 
Well, I was going to change the wheel, but uh, I actually found out that the, I think it was the, the bar that I had didn't fit my lug nuts. So what we did is, um, I was trying to call like AAA um, at the time. And they said it would be like $5 just to like, just to bring the tool. I was like, oh, fuck that. We'll just go to like AutoZone in the morning when they open. I'm not going to pay like, I don't have shit fucking money like that at the time. Well, it's not really now, but. And, uh, and, and then as we started to like, like literally we lay down. And I had, I had just had like an energy drink, like just because it was a lot of work. Like we had done we had help with the festival and then we had packed up all our shit and left. I had, I had our energy drink like before we left. So it was only like maybe, I don't know, 35 minutes ago that I had, I had an energy drink because it's not long we driving um, from the gas station. And then like, I was kind of having trouble to get to sleep, but then I was just so fucking tired that like, we we just I, I just started to to go to sleep like I could feel like I was you know you like at that cutting edge and like right before I like fell asleep we I I I could feel us being pulled up like or it just felt like that like you're just being sucked up to the sky and um. Not very, not very fast, but there's definitely like a powerful, like, like, like you started or like a, a, an ascent on a ride, you know, like that very clear, like, whoa. And the, the girl I was with was like, she was fucking scared, but, or seemed like it. Um, the thing she said was pretty fucking wild. Like she was, she was, <gasps> And that's when I knew, like, this is not, you know, this is not a dream. This is, like, this is definitely happening because she's confirming what I'm feeling. And, um, and then I remember she was scared, so she said, um, take, take him and leave me. I was like, oh, shit. I didn't know what to say I didn't say anything then. But I was like, that's kinda of fucked up. Like why? Like I was just kinda of thinking like why why is she saying take me? Like why can't she just say like don't take me and like leave you know Brendan out of it? Like this is fucking kinda of rude, but whatever. I didn't I was just like and then maybe I was a little like like awestruck by that and then so i rolled off of her and i looked i looked out the window because i was like this is fucking amazing you know i was like kind of like pumped like i have been like studying this stuff for a little bit now like um we've been seeing like videos and stuff about how uh there's like this galactic federation of light that came to help humanity here and stuff um of of these et's and um so i looked out the window but i didn't i didn't see anything moving because it felt like the whole rv was moving up that's just how it feels but i think i mean it gets like you kind of have to get into the whole lore <laughs> the whole realm man uh because sometimes these these things um, cannot just be extraterrestrial, but like extra dimensional. It sounds like even like I'm just adding more fucking key terms and like confusing oddness to like trying your like ego to try and accept. Like, okay, now it's just getting more ridiculous, right? But, um, but I think so. Sometimes like. Because they say people, like, have had these experiences, like, where they feel like they're being pulled up, like, even, like, the middle of, like, a festival concert, and, like, their friends are like, yeah, I don't know, fucking nothing, 
we didn't see anything happen to you but so it just i don't know maybe it was just like an energetic like test like um cuz i thought oh if we had just like kind of like just about to cross over into like a like a dream realm maybe it like pulled up like your our dream body you know or it was like kind of like manipulating that but we were awake but anyway that's just like how i'm trying to perceive it i'm trying to like get more information through posting these videos but and then um basically it it eventually like it faded off like the pulling just kind of it stopped after about i don't know it probably wasn't that long maybe like 40 50 seconds like almost like it was a tester um but i think because she wasn't willing that's why it was like a tester because it's a lot of it's off based off free will uh, i've heard from a base of their broadcasts through like channeling people but um i said like it only give you like the things that you're comfortable with or that uh you you know are ready for or, or you accept or you say you want you know so i was like down i was like this is this is the craziest thing in the world. It's a random guy and not, well, in a, you know, like a 76 RV, like living like the fucking, like dirt life. Like I'm fucking, I was like stone poor at the time. Like people would be like, oh shit, you're like nobody. But um, all of a sudden you're like, wow, like fucking selected by ETs. That's, that's pretty incredible. And, um, and then I remember, I remember like it had to have been some type of, you know, bodily experience. Cause I, after it stopped, I got like, like motion sickness. It was probably like the combination of like all that physical stuff and then the energy drink and then the pulling of me up or having the feeling po like I've been, I'm being pulled up. And I got motion sickness, and I knew that if you, like, or I seen it online, if you, if you, like, eat and chew bay leaves, apparently that helps. So I started doing that. So I don't really, like, digest, like, synthetics and stuff. I don't take, like, whatever that crap is. Um, and I was just standing there, like, what the fuck is going on? And I looked outside. I didn't, I didn't see, any, I didn't see anything, like, still there. And our neighbor RV was still there. And then, um, and then we just went to like, we just kind of talked to, like about her. She didn't want to talk. Like, um, she was acting like she was sleeping. It was just really weird. I think she was just scared. And I don't know. I was like, kind of getting upset. I was like, why are you not talking to me? Like, obviously you're awake. Like that was, I heard you talking. Um. <laughs> You know, just falling asleep after that shit. That was like fucking wild. And then, so I didn't, I didn't know what to do because I don't, I didn't really think we could leave, and I didn't know we weren't like hurt or anything. Because I, I thought like the, the, if the other tire goes, like we could, like that was a saving grace. Is that they could have taken out the other tire or both the tires with the metal thing, but they pushed it on the only one tire, and that could have like you know fucking flipped this over. We just had like strap, like lap belts like we, you know you could have actually got hurt that in that case so they didn't want to hurt us they could have hurt us if that was the case so there's obviously were like something benevolent like trying to like signal us that they were watching or that they're there and without damaging us and like being like yo we we're fucking mad at you i don't know why they'd be mad at me but um <laughs> they don't seem to really have much of those uh emotions but um and I tried to go to sleep. I couldn't really get to sleep. I was just this fucking. It was just crazy um, amount of like epic proportion to understand. Like this is. It just felt so wild. But that was just the beginning, because 
uh, I finally get to sleep after like shaking around for a while, and like she finally started talking to like a little bit, like okay, keep moving around, and then woke woke up the next day, um, feeling like kind of like feeling pretty tired, but overall okay, but still like very motivated, and then we just kind of I just decided to, like. Just limp it to the parts store, like I said, and then change the with the spare that had luckily had been, I guess, signaled to to get. And then, um, and then the next night was like the even weirder one because uh, well. We stayed in this California City OHV, and actually, the one after that was like even stranger. But um, I remember like like my it was just like my um, like we saw like these flashes of of light, like beaming down in the distance, and then um, it, it looked like I guess I mean kind of like a lightning but it was perfectly straight which is like very rare for like almost like never happens with lightning but it looked like a, a meteorite but it was like wicked bright light and it was like especially like, it really chased after it in the buggy and then uh came back and it uh it definitely was It was just it was just pretty odd. I mean, I just never seen anything like that. And then I remember like we woke up after that night and like my back was just kind of it was just kind of sore. And then I got a massage and then we drove to like this other place down the road which is like later becomes more relevant cuz it was um where would we doing like a like a race there. Um cuz I I race like UTVs and it was racing rally cars before and um so I almost want to say like that it was kind of weird that I had brought the UTV in the first place to this like moon tribe event but I wanted I saw like the area on the map because it's like a kind of like a secret thing but I, we forgot I like, got the directions and I saw the area on the map and it just looked like it could be fun to ride around but they ended up driving it like this, like my dream, like heaven place where I usually, I love to like drive like the most. And we get to just, like pre-run the race basically at this like location, like where we're going to be racing. Um, so it kind of worked out and I guess maybe they're interested in that. And like, I mean, it's pretty interesting, but so we ended up driving there and, um, we we like drove around the course a bit kind of just got lost like it was pretty confusing but we went to the top of like the mountain there and um you can see like one of the lights kind of stationary color changing colors in the sky and then just like all of a sudden it's kind of just odd like all of these moths um started surrounding me and a bit of like her and then they like f they like followed us all the way back to like my rv which is really quite far down the mountain of a walk and um oh that's right we drove the utv down that's why um but they followed me all the way back in and then they and we parked the utv on the back side and then they followed me in and then try to get in the rv and i was like ooh. Uh, I'm not going to eat a hole or something. I tried to keep them outside. I didn't want to, like, have to take them back to this place, like, in another environment that might survive. I don't know. And then it was, like, really adamant. And then we started, like, seeing... I saw um, another weird thing was uh, this this kit fox came up in it. Uh, I saw it through the window. I had my hat out the window. I was looking for, like, the lights and stuff. And I saw this kit fox, and... Or at least I think it was Kid Fox, and it jumped on the back of the RV, and like when it it looked at me, it looked like it kind of had like like large. I know they do, but like they have a little bit larger looking like area of their eye, but.
but it looked like it had like like ET um, eyes. Um, and then I was like, ah, oh, that was weird. Like even like the way that it looked at me, like it was like slow. And then we try to like, I was like, well, maybe it just wants food, and we try to feed it, and um, it didn't didn't seem to want any of that. And then like um, later, uh, like a big bird came by and was like landing on the roof and shit too. Uh, it was just it was just a strange like, I I don't know way I could try and explain that is like. I guess the, these things are are so connected to the universe. These ETs, like, because they acknowledge um, that the whole consciousness of the universe is from one source. Like, what we would consider God, but not doesn't have to be from like the Bible. Um, just, just the and like it emanated all these different, like, with this say dimensions, and then um, the material third dimension that we're in and maybe like when you come in contact with them like you're more attuned to even <clears throat> animals um because they just have like a natural consciousness to them like they're not very um self-conscious all the time like they don't have as many like doubting thoughts as us usually it looks like it i mean um, that's still, I mean, obviously I'm just seeking for a further explanation and answers by making this video, but that's one of the things I can think of, or maybe even like, cause I was thinking that like the first night it it kind of felt like, um, it's kind of like astral meeting at some sort of like, uh, even though we were like awake, um, but also, like, I guess when you go to sleep, a lot of DMT gets released in your brain. And, uh, all, like, a lot of plants have DMT, and we're out in nature, and, I don't know, maybe it just, like, had, like, more DMT circling around us that these animals and insects were attracted to us. I don't know. But anyway, um, so the, this last night was, like, even more profound, because, um... We went to sleep, and I remember being awakened to this sound, like a, a deep ba bassy sound, like and I like, and I woke up and I was I was being I I remember it, it felt like I was being lowered down in the bed. And for some reason, I was I was completely naked, and I thought I had gone to sleep with um, shorts on, because in case I had to like run outside and look at these things again. Um, and <laughs> it sounds pretty funny, butt ass, naked, and and I was being lowered down onto the bed. It was there was a light emanating from the outside that was so bright it looked like it was like dusk or whatever uh the afternoon or like a really like late morning and it was um it was just strange because the sound yeah the sound was so loud it was like it was like you're in front of like a bass speaker or a bunch of them and it was like boom. Like kind of like it's hard to do. Um, there is actually a song I heard they could play, but but yeah, you get the gist. And and I was I was that time I was I was scared because I had just woken up. Like you know, like even like when you're just falling asleep sometimes, like, there's like that. Like you're kind of like your. It seems like your uh, flight or fight response is like kind of more like sensitive. And you're not like cognitively like anticipating anything, so you don't really know what the fuck's going on. And I was like, as like a tighter spot too, because you're in the class C, you're like up in like this like shelf above the driving cockpit, 
and like that's where you sleep like so I just I just felt like kind of claustrophobic because I could I could feel the environmental like like pressure change like I guess it's like the it might be the barometric pressure but that sounds more like a meteorologist thing but I could feel like 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 an object like right above me which is obviously would at this point would most likely be a fucking et spaceship and um it was so it just i don't know i just felt like oh like shit is it gonna i don't know like you know is it gonna fucking fall on me or something like like that's my brain, like, you know, I'm just kind of, like, you're trying to, your brain tries to protect you, so it thinks of, like, all the fucking negative shit, but none of that happened. It was just fucking, just your brain, like, trying to, it's like in a, its own state. But then I, and then, as soon as I acknowledged that I wasn't going to be, like, <laughs> they wouldn't just, like, randomly crush us. <laughs> and that I was, I was okay, like, they had lowered me down, like, safely, like a fucking baby, you know, like, into a crate then I was like, okay, like, what's, what's going on here? And then I had this sense that, and I get kind of, like, emotional, that these were, like, like, my friends. And, like, maybe we had, like, hung out or something in a, in a previous time. <laughs> Maybe like a different lifetime or something. And I don't know why I thought of that, but, or just, maybe I was just thinking, oh, they're just people who are just, or these beings are just friendly. Because they, you know, they wanted to like, not know when they're there. And it didn't, you know, they're not hurting us. And they're trying to like, do something productive here. And I remember like, they floated there after a little while after thinking that with the sound of and um and i just felt like I, I felt really euphoric like really good and it felt it felt like yeah like reconnecting with like you know your best friends or something and then a little bit after that maybe like another minute and a half of that it they it just it just slowly faded away and it 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 went away so fast that it, it almost and you couldn't like it the weirdest thing is you couldn't really like you could only slightly feel the that the object was gone but it like there wasn't like it didn't feel like much like wind or like whoosh like whoosh, like shook the rv or anything it was just like it just fucking was gone and i guess um that's sort of what happens or something and And then uh, I felt like kind of sad. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck!" Like those are this could have been my friends. Like they fucking left me here. I don't know why, but um, so <clears throat> let me just you know, like get a hole in the cell. Starting to sound like a beach. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, that was obviously like really, really profound. Um, and then I, I was like, okay. And I got up and I was just kind of, I was looking for like a flashlight because it was dark all of a sudden. <laughs> The light disappeared too. Uh, and the whole time we were, while we were camping, we were basically by ourselves. We thought there was people up there. There was like just these like empty RVs that had been parked on this property. It was like the, um, that's Lou Peralta's. I met him later, but, um, and, And I don't know, it was just, the, like, I, I tried to look for a flashlight. I couldn't find my fucking flashlight. It was, like, digging into these tools. I was trying to talk to the person that was with me, and just kind of, like, ignoring me again, which is weird. 
but eventually responded like didn't know where the flashlight was so i just went outside and yeah that's when i saw i think there was um it was an owl um it's out there and then I just looked around. And I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it. The the thing anymore. Or I didn't see it there. Um. I guess that was the most frustrating part of the whole thing. It would be like that. I didn't. That I didn't actually get to see. The ship up close, because I was in a bed. And I was actually thinking about putting my head out to like out the window to like look at it, but I but I had heard like from previous videos like this one guy, he had been um, taken up to ships before, and they said like you're not supposed to have like fear, and I guess he said he was getting put up by the Pleiadians. If you look up those, they kind of actually kind of look like Nordic people, I guess, um, like us, but with. Just like like blonde, like beautiful hair and like usually like blue eyes. They're Aryan race motherfuckers. No, um and then it's said to have like helped humanity out for a long time, like throughout all of history, which is like a lot of it and a lot of um even like the uh I guess the ancient alien um videos and stuff. Um But yeah, so I didn't wanna like move because I didn't wanna fucking Get, start getting beamed up, or even though I, I guess I've been being set down, and and like fall. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but this is just one of the things that I had heard because it was also the, the, they listed like how they traveled, and it was like different than another type of ET that I had heard called Tigetans. But I don't know if I had a guess. Um, I was thinking that it was the. Like an Archerian? Maybe the first time, I guess? Or maybe both times? But, um, because of just because of like the more ethereal feeling thing the first time, and then like the more physical feeling thing the second time, um, maybe that was played one. But, um, uh, and then the next, the next day, we went to sleep, and then the next morning, felt fucking, like, really excellent, like, yeah, woo, woo, I remember, like, my friend was dancing around, and, like, I was on the wheel, and I was fucking, like, I mean, you can kind of see it here, but I was spinning the fucking wheel, like, super fast, and, um, I was actually doing a, it was a racing tournament at the time. And I went back and did the the stage that I had had the most trouble with. It was real wheel drive uh, through like these tight woods. And I remember I, I did the stage again, and I was 12 seconds faster. And I had been just doing it for like two weeks straight almost, because I was like, how much time you had in between each stage? It was like well, it was like a week and a half, but maybe a little less. But um, and that was like. For me, that was ridiculously different because usually you can only gain like from the week is you can only gain like maybe four or five seconds tops because you're you're just doing it over and over and you're just gaining these small increments per second. Most people know that, but that's a huge gain. I mean, most racers know that. Sorry, not most people. <laughs> no, some pompous. Um. So I guess that suggests like some type of, I mean, people have put this out there, like some type of genetic manipulation. Um, and also, man, that's why we felt so euphoric. We're just like getting like a new state of being. Or maybe we were just pumped if we experienced ATs. I don't know. I'm just throwing out these other suggestions. And, uh, um, 
Oh, I guess I guess on the on the second day we had slept for eleven plus hours and still felt tired. So maybe they had met meeting with us too, like in the astro realm. I guess there's some type of a a rule so far that these ETs aren't they're not uh, supposed to jump in and interfere with like our earthly goings because we're supposed to kind of take control um, like of our own planet and like develop it as it, through our own evolution as we're the ones that kind of like you know stake no we have we have we because we came from it we, we have like an attachment to it basically so I heard like unless there's enough people that are aware that the, all these ships are in the air and um, they agree that they want help from these benevolent forces like the Galactic Federation of Light um, which is was the ones I mentioned the Arcturians and the um, Pleiadians just to name of very few and the Tigans I guess um, last but not least <laughs> Tigans I guess uh, <laughs> whatever <laughs> I like to joke around these things because they're so ridiculous um, but that that would mean and then so that's why I'm making this video because I heard that um, they're going to be uncloaking soon and like because they're already up in the sky I've posted a video of like the lights flying around uh, it was actually a recording of um, from the NASA's ISIS these light, lights coming in in a, in a distance um, but I deleted it because I'm a little I was a little bit just kind of I was a little weary I didn't know I didn't know you know I guess a lot of people are because of the movies and shit especially now fuck they just released like two like fear mongering movies about ETs and shit so this is the best time for me to release this but I needed to get it before they all just come down and be like oh well maybe you know what's telling the truth um, if I do it after, I just look like a freaking bandwagon poser, dude. Um, but I also, I have had other experiences after the, uh, I mean, many experiences with entities, but, um, but seeing, I, I've seen a ship, it, I don't know if it was the one that had visited, but we were um, same same person I was with, but there was a a jet flying through the air as a fire jet. Um, this is in Rosamond, and it was coming from the north, which would be like, I guess the China Lake base, and it was like banking like this way, and then it banked like this really hard, and it started to go towards this. Uh, Like, back, like kind of the side of a cloud but we, I just see this um this big ass ship uncloak and it it was kind of shaped like I, th I when I thought it was happening so fast so I thought it was shaped like this like a rhombus um and then it it moved out of the way of the jet and the jet went and like turned really hard and like banked down like it it like like the jet got spooked. Like I think that if he had, if the, the the ET ship hadn't moved, I think the jet guy would have hit a cloaked ship and killed himself. Um, so they kind of I guess saved his life, but it was it was definitely pretty wild because right before that, um, I had felt this like like uh surge of energy but then i felt like pretty like hot like like warm and i guess that was like the i guess from the uh, list of some of the videos but there's um there's channeling videos um uh i've seen the ones on uh higher self portal 
dot com or like the YouTube, and uh, they just have these people that they're called channelers, and they they just receive the messages the ETs and like Trent and you know kind of just broadcast them out. There's also um, Galactic Federation of Light YouTube channels. Um, I think it's I think it's just GFL. Uh, it's like the acronym, and you can search that, and one of the channels will show up. Um, but I think, oh yeah, one of the guys is Daniel Scranton, and then um, there's a bunch of other different ones. Um, but basically, they said then, at the same day, there was a broadcast that said that people, one of the, uh, they call it like ascension, I guess, to like the, uh, fifth dimension, which doesn't mean like literally, but like more of like a um, mental and energetic thing. And apparently, people were having some type of symptom where they felt hot on that same day, and they were talking about it. Um, I also felt like kind of tired, and I guess it was like taking on this new energy form. It when you, your body tries to like take it in and like absorb it, it releases the old and that can like kind of make you not feel as good but i have been feeling a lot better i used to be like i used to have like a lot more um depression depression and like i just feel really fucking down like day after day and now i'm just like just feel way 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 better um i have been like for the past well it's been going on for like five years but there was some, you know, and they also said there would be some episodes where you just didn't feel as good during the process um, they were talking about for the past. I've been following it for, is it three years now? Yeah. Uh, but I was learning about other ET experiences like before that. And then, um, basically I've been having even more profound stuff where I, <clears throat> I've been having these things where in the middle of the night, I could like hear like all these cracks, which is in one of the videos. And like, kind of like, it sounded like a temperature change, but the room wasn't temperature changing that much at all. It was staying the same. Like I just recorded the temperature and it'd be like, <laughs> And I could hear all these things, and um, and and sometimes I could feel like I could feel them like vibrating my body, like vroom, 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 vroom. and like these pulses, like really strong. And like you know, if you're in, like an RV, I was like, oh, you know, that's just like the RV moving. But no, like this is not feel like the RV moving, like shuffling. You could feel like like the bass, like a speaker, like right in your chest, like. Oh. And I guess like the uh, a lot of the times we talk about like chakras and like like spewing up like chakra or these energy centers that are, are in our bodies, and because we also I guess also have um, like souls like when you die you don't really die like there's like over one thousand four hundred recorded episodes of people like dying and going to an etheric realm and coming back um, like a, a white place or like a lot of light and. So they meet like answers they never talk to, but it's well documented. But um, it's probably it's part it with our energetic bodies too um, that taking this partial form, and um, and sometimes I even feel like like something like touched my pineal gland or something like the center of my forehead, and I feel like this like huge, wicked big tickling. Like I used to I remember I used to feel that when like. Someone rub like um, like a piece of like metal or something like static right here and it tickle like really strongly, and I just like try to like I figure they're doing it trying to like help me, so I just try there and like oh, like don't like where's this it's like ah. like it felt like really like intense like really strong, and then um, I was moving 